Hey guys, it's Peter Cooney, your New Jersey real estate giant, broker owner of Open Doors Realty. I'm with my buddy Pat Hauser. Um, more than a buddy, I, you're a neighbor. Yeah. Um, and I got to tell you, um, we're on. Pat, tell tell people a little bit about you. I mean, you know, I'll let you start. There's you're so dynamic. That's what I love about this. Um, I don't know. I don't know people as well until I get into this kind of scenario. Yeah. You know everything from you know you're you're currently you know reading a book a month you're 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 into self-help you've recently let's show let's show off the guns you dropped 35 pounds yeah 35 <laughs> pounds i feel amazing so i mean i just want to thank you for this opportunity it's, it's just fantastic i love it i love uh um you know seeing what you've grown into you know peter just on the street you now you moved in and and you were working for a, a realtor and a broker task and now you started your own so you know, be, you know, you got to pat yourself on the back with that. That's just incredible. And it's great to see our neighbors and our friends just keep on growing as people. And, and that's all I ever want. You know, it's just, I just want the best for people and myself and my family. And it's good to see other people succeeding, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just a little bit of back myself. I, I am the general manager of Porsche Mammoth. Um, we're part of the Penske Automotive Group, the largest automotive group in the world, um, the largest importer of Porsches in the world. Um, so I'm honored every single day and blessed to Come and work with the best people. Um, you know, I realized that uh, the human um, asset, you know, human capital is the greatest asset that we have as a corporation. And so, um, you know, I, I get to work with the best people and they make it easy to work here. And so, um, but we're growing. You know, I started here nine and a half years ago at Porsche Monmouth, um, moved down to Monmouth County about five years ago, a little over five years ago. And I just absolutely love it down here. The community is incredible living by the beach, uh, having everything you want just a little bit away, you know, New York City, 45 minutes away, the, the shore, just 10 minutes away. Um, it's just incredible. And, uh, you know, I love it here. I love, I love Lincroft. I love Monmouth County. I love, I love Porsche. You'll, you'll find out that, uh, when we talk more that, you know, I just live, eat and breathe Porsche, my family, my terrible <laughs> sports teams. Um, and, you know, and just, uh, uh, like you said, I appreciate your knowledge and that, you know, just wanting to get better as a person, you know, you know, talked about it before, just getting 1% better every day and just keep growing. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, one of the things that you had mentioned to me, it was like, um, I, I guess let's talk about Lincroft cause that's how yeah. we kind of got to know each other, but yeah. it's, um, you really kind of tied it in there where it's like, you know, why, you know, it, it's funny. I do real estate obviously. Right. So um, one of the interesting parts is like, why is there a premium for Lincroft? Mm. And I'm just like, it's about the community, right? Like yep. somebody was telling me earlier today um, that they get, you know, for Halloween, they get maybe two or three kids to their door for mm. the last 20 years and they live in Middletown. Wow. And I'm going, I'm going, come to our neighborhood, man. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, <laughs> That I, I, we just started putting up more Halloween decorations this year. We love Halloween, and unfortunately, because of my job, it's the last day of the month every year. So last year was the first time I could do Halloween in our community because of the fact of the uh, oh, my leg goes out. Uh, because of the uh, uh, it was on a Sunday, and so uh, you know that's it, it, just watching all the kids and the parents and they're pulling a wagon and uh, maybe bringing some drinks on the road. You know, some road sodas. I saw some people. I'm like, ah, I wish I did that, but. You know, it's just really cool to see the whole community coming together and everyone's running around. It was like when I was a kid, you know, and right. you, you hear certain stories about, uh, you know, it's not like when we were younger, but seeing that at Halloween last last year was just incredible. And unfortunately, I don't get to participate this year at Halloween, but um, the car business for Halloween is so hard because it is the last day of the month and and in the car business, because we're so, you know, factored in by the months that uh, I'm starting next year here for all the employees of Penske in this region from Monmouth County. So we have three stores. We have a Range Rover store, an Audi store, and our Porsche store. And so what I'm going to do for all our employees next year is have a trunk or treat because we always miss the people that work here. And we have moms that work here, dads. Uh, we always miss our kids being dressed up on Halloween. We miss the school parades. We always miss it. So what I'm setting up at my human resources is we're going to do a trunk or treat here. And so we can have all the kids do a parade and then we'll get to see all our kids on the Sunday before Halloween, you know, dressed up. And I think uh, HR loved it and we're going to do it next year. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see that. So we're just trying to, like you said, you know, about community, right? It's also my work community. It's something that we get to miss and 
when you talk to the parents right it's like, oh, you know, I, I'd love to slip out for an hour or two. And I always try to let them, you know, we, right. we always try to let each other slip out uh, to try to do that with the family. But yeah, Halloween's fantastic in our neighborhood. I, I just link Croft in general. I, my sons are on the baseball team, you know, <laughs> and just talking to the other parents and how much they love the community. And, and a lot of them all, a lot of them have moved here recently. You know, it's yep. very hard to find anyone that was born in Link Croft. It's kind of like Florida, you know, and I'm like, hey, sure. it's like Monmouth County sure. seems like Florida to me. I'm like, is anyone from Monmouth County? But um, but there, but the, you meet a lot, you know, the reason I moved to Link Cross because one of my good employees who's, whose families have been friends, uh, I've been, I've been friends for years, about 18 years, um, uh, they grew up in Link Cross. And so I knew it was always a good community. He went to, uh, CBA and, uh, went through the whole Link Cross, uh, uh, public school system until he went to, to CBA and they, they, they produced great kids that did great things, you know, two of them are dentists, one of them works for me and he's doing awesome and now lives in Rumson, um, you know, and so, uh, I mean, Link Croft is just the community, the people, the people is what makes it, you know, and I think that's what's great about our area. Yeah, no, it, it, it's the same thing. My sister lived here, my my brother-in-law's a, 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 I guess, sergeant in Middletown and stuff mm. like that, and it's just like, when when we we moved from we moved from New York city to Asbury park. Right. Okay. You know, obviously we're heavily tattooed. Um, we fit in right in Asbury park. And then we had care and we're like, Oh shit. Like, you know, we got to think about school systems and stuff like that. And yeah. it's like, instantly you're like, all right, let go off. Like that's an easy one. Right. Yeah. And now having my sister so close, which is, you know, literally the way that I mapped it was I wanted Kira to be able to walk without crossing a major street. If that makes sense, right? Yeah. So you go for walks, you know, you don't have to go across Middletown Lincroft Road, anything okay. like that. You can, you know, it's kind of like, oh, we're going to TT's house, you know, it's like, and that's literally what it is. It's it's a mile, you know. Um, and, and I love Lincroft now, right? It's just, you know, I think uh Amber just joined the Lincroft Village Green Association. Uh -huh. and, and again, there's so many little nuances that I, you know, because it's 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 a village, right? Like who yeah. said they live in a village? You know, Middletown's you know the biggest town in you know Monmouth County. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like uh, I say I you know my office is in Belford, right? Where where are you located? Uh, technically that is. And this uh, our store is in West Long Branch. West Long Branch, right? Yeah. So, um, by the way, Lupo's Pizza right by you. Ah, um, uh, uh, Lupo's right there. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. You There's can, a new place that just opened up in Eaton Town. We've gone to Bello. Okay. Pie. Like there's this like new. They have this uh pie. It's the it's like a pesto white pie with 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 a uh, breaded chicken on it. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. So we 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 eat we eat out eat out a lot here, especially in the car business. But every Saturday, I buy the entire team food every Saturday. Okay. Um, and so we are always trying new restaurants. But then we'll try a restaurant and then we'll eat it for like three months straight. And I'm like, wow, oh, we don't want that anymore, you know. And so yeah. we're always trying new things. So. Right. So, so, all right. So I want to throw this one at you. You've mentioned brand a couple of times. Um, I, I, I agree with you because literally you want to talk about like kind attracts like kind. I don't know if you listen to uh Sharon Chaprata, uh, I'm butchering his la last name, but the 5 a.m. call out of California, mm. and, you know, it's uh this, you know, just, there's always a topic and today it was about brand. Um, and literally they were talking about this guy was literally saying, he goes, people look at me and they're like, how are your videos so good? And he's like, I've been doing them for 10 years. Yeah. You know, it's like, what, what is your brand? You know, and people don't focus that, you know, enough. Right. Um, you don't see discounts. I don't see like, Oh, like uh, your port you, you, Porsche isn't the brand that I'm saying, what is my monthly payment on? Right. Like you yeah. said, you know, it's kind of, I always, the example that he used specifically was Tesla. Mm -hmm. You know, like I work for Tesla. I love Tesla, right? Like, you know, and I'm always like, uh, it's like Apple versus Dell. Yeah. Right? Like if I say Dell, what do you think of? Computers, right? You know, yeah. if you say Apple, I'm like, it's a, it's a lifestyle, right? It's a yeah. brand, you know. Um, are you a, you know, are you a Samsung or an Apple guy? Like since I mentioned. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm an Apple guy. I mean, yeah, so, I'm Apple uh, through and through. It's, yeah. it just is. So, um um, and all right, it's baseball season. I got to throw this in there. You're a Mets fan, obviously, Ooh. right? Yeah. Um, 
is your season officially complete when the Yankees get knocked out? Because <laughs> so I try not to be a Yankee hater. I have to be because my friends are enjoying the Mets misery, you know. So it's like it, uh, being an Islanders fan, a Mets fan, a Jets fan. They call them Jims out in Long Island, a Jim fan, right? So the Giants fans have always, you know, beat me up. The the Yankees fans have always beat me up. The Rangers and Devils fans have always been sort of stuff. But we were just talking about it. I, I'm 38 years old, and the last time any of my teams won a championship was 1986. I was two. So yeah. I, I've, you know, had a lot of misery and getting close and just not not finishing it, not carrying that ball over the goal line. But um, with the Mets, I don't know. I, the good thing with, with the Mets being out, I'm a season ticket holder to the Islanders. My family's super excited about it. Hockey starts on Thursday. The Islanders' first game is on Thursday. Right. We're going to it. You know, so I'm already past baseball. Mets is over. Ah, the Yankees is done. It's hockey season. I'm good. It's starting to get cold out. Baseball was for the summer. So right. that's my mentality this year. But the Mets were still in it. Uh, of course, I'd be freezing trying to go to round two and go into a game. I, I was almost bought tickets last minute to that last game against the Padres. And thank God I didn't because I got, right. got crushed. But uh, but now, you know, it's hockey season for me. So I try not to hate on the Yankees. When I was younger, Definitely. I was a Yankees hater just because I was a Mets fan. And you had to be. It was just a war between us and our <laughs> friends. But I've gotten more mature. I've just gotten older and just go, ah, you know what I mean? Like, uh, If it's not impacting my life, then I just leave it alone. And so that's kind of how I am as a person. If it doesn't impact me personally, nah, so leave it be. You know. But if they get to the World Series... I'll be watching again and hoping they lose. So yes, that, that's fair, that's fair out. enough. I get that because it's like an Eagles fan. Uh, you know, I have plenty of friends that are Eagles fans. They're like, they're like the last team I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, <it's laughs> I gotta fantastic. hear. It. I'm not. I'm not even in the same. Yeah, same division. Yeah, you know, I'm a Niners fan. We, you know, we've been to the. You know, it's kind of the same thing. We've been to Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up on them always winning, right? Or at least yeah. being competitive. And it's like. Eh. Whatever. Um, now I don't really care. I guess I'm a fair weather fan. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. big. I, I can think of worse things. Um, one thing that you had mentioned before we uh, jumped on the video, you're in. You're reading one book a month, right? Um, mm -hmm. How long have you been doing that for? Only a few months. So uh, it's a new thing. So I, you know, in the last two years, we're talking about it. In the last two years, I've really focused on trying to learn between the hours of 11 and one or 12 and two, my wife goes to sleep. And that's the time where I can go, all right, this is for me, right? This is my time. And during that time, I, I wanna just keep on growing and learning and, and learning things. And sometimes it might be something that just pops up that day. And I'm like, you know what? I wanna learn, learn more about that tonight. And right. I'll take that time to read up on it, read as much as I can articles online or watch videos on YouTube that are educational and not, not slanted toward one view or another. But um, I try to be open-minded on, on a lot of things, but reading the books, the last book I just read, I just finished um, last week was, or the first week of October was uh, um, uh, John C. Ah, oh, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, but the five, the five levels of leadership. Uh, John Maxwell. By John Maxwell, yeah, John C. Maxwell. What an I incredible see. book, you know. And so. Don't speak uh, on that. What's that? I saw him speak regarding that book. Oh, really? <laughs> All right. oh, that's awesome. So like, I would have loved to have been there. And so I'm always into like uh, leadership. You know, I, I, sure. I don't want to be a boss. You know, I, I run a really big business here in, in town and, and, and it's not about being a boss. I don't like to boss people around. I like to show and lead and lead by example and, and helping keep other people grow is it would be my success. So reading that book, I've realized, you know, some people here would say I'm a level five leader. Uh, but it makes you do a lot of self-reflecting. So I know I'm a level four leader. I know that we four. have a four, a four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, four leader. I want to get to level five and I have all the attributes to be a level five. I'm just not there yet. You know, level five leader or, and I'm blessed to work with Penske, you know, Roger Penske is the chairman of our company and, you know, he's the ultimate leader and, and my boss, John Craig, and I'm going to boss Peter, um, they're level five leaders because they create new leaders. And so my goal in 2023 is to set up a succession plan for our store for someone else to be able to take my seat and create and 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 uh, cultivate that next leader for this store because that's very important for my legacy is to create more leaders. I want my corporation to look back at our store and say, wow, 
look how many people came out of Porsche Monmouth under Patrick or um, you know, we need a new, we need a new service manager. We need a new sales manager over at this store. Well, let's look at Patrick's store because he's creating leaders. He's creating uh, people that are doing well in this industry. And that's what I want my legacy to be. And then when I do finally leave this store, whether it be, uh, you know, when I retire, because I don't mind sitting here for another 30 years, I absolutely love this brand, the store and what we've built over the last nine and a half years since I've been here. But say I move on to a corporate job to work for Penske, um, you know, it, it's, it's big for me to know that the culture of the store is maintained by the leaders that I have put in place and that my customers who call me on my cell phone all the time, that when I do leave, they'll be able to say, ah, the place is running the same. It's just as great to go there. What a great experience. And the last thing I want to hear is, oh, since you left, it hasn't been the same. And that's the last thing I ever want to hear. So it's about cultivating that next step. And so the five steps of leadership really brought that in perspective that I need to do that for my store for the success and the health of my business here because uh, I treat it as my business and and, and it is and, and it's all of our business here and that's the greatest thing about being a business leader is that you know I have 35 employees and there's 35 people's lives that depend on the decisions that I make every single day you know there's mortgages and kids and everything and so I take that weight very seriously and I want to make sure that everyone does well under me and uh, hopefully uh, you know can get up to to where I am today and you know run their own store because that that's what really creates the level five leadership and i'm blessed to work for a company that believes in just human capital um and and realizing it's the greatest asset and so we have a lot of leadership programs with cox automotive and we do a lot of things for our employees and sure. um you know our store just won the number one store to work for in penske uh, which i'm super honored and super happy about it. that's the that's the greatest achievement you know three of the last four years we've had that title and and I'm one of the top rated GMs uh, in the company for for people to work for and that's just because we make it a fun atmosphere you know um, there's one thing I say about my business and I tell all oh my god these lights I tell all one uh, I tell all new hires and I even tell customers this and I, I treat this rest I read I treat this business like a restaurant so the reason I say that is because when you go to a restaurant. Uh, Peter, you know, when you're going to recommend it to a friend or a family member, you'll say, I went to this restaurant, man, the food was great. The atmosphere was great. And the service is great. Those are the three things that I think in retail that need to be controlled to be successful, to get word of mouth out there. So with me, Porsche, we're the best food on the block. Absolutely. We, we, we have the best cars in the industry. Absolutely love them. You know, Penske has built this $13 million 30,000 square foot facility for our customers that have a great, uh, a great environment. And so the only thing we have to control is the experience, you know? And so we can focus hundred percent of our time and our energy in the store, just making sure that our, our customers and our employees have the best experience being here every single day. And that will, will lead to our success, you know? And so I just focus on that every single day, two of the three are already handed to me. I just have to worry about the third one, which is the most important, which is just experience. A lot of the stuff that you're talking about, the cultural, um, the culture um, about the business, the staff, John Maxwell, uh, you froze up, but um, I'm sure I'm going to see. I'm you. coming back. I'm hearing you now. All right. No, um, the John Maxwell stuff, the culture of the firm, uh, obviously the brand, it all ties in together. It's not by mistake. Um, what I love is, I remember John Maxwell saying, even if you're a level five employee and you're being managed by a level three kind of manager, mm. you never go any higher than a level two. Yeah. And, and the reason why is because you keep bumping into the, you know, at some point you just get tired of running into the wall um, because you have a level three manager and you don't want to, you don't want to ruffle any feathers. So you just kind of pull back and it's just, um, one of the things that I talk about culture, and I'm sure you're aware of this, is like I train all of my employees, which is not typical of a broker. I mm. give them, I get like, I love my agents. You know, they're all family and stuff like that. And the reason why I do it is because I want success, right? You know, it's it's the culture, it's the brand, it's everything. You know, when we're doing our business plan, it's a group effort, it's a think process. You know, why are we doing what we're doing? And a lot of it has to do with just helping people. Um, and the referral part of my business, if I did nothing else, but just, you know, 
contacted the people that know me and my business. I don't have to do anything else, but you know, it's kind of, that's not good enough. Right. Like that's just like, that's, that's a, uh, you know, that's what, um, uh, who can we say? What's a lower car brand? Or you're not allowed to mention stuff like that. Well, I think all car brands are great. <laughs> Nobody can mention almost anyone. You know, uh, I think a Honda, like, you know, reliable, yeah. but you know, like, okay. Uh, not even that, like uh, the Elantra or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mitsubishi, right? It's, um, I'm thinking of like, do I, what, who do I think of driving like one of those sort of cars? Typically somebody that's, you know, right out of college or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just, you know, it, again, it is what it is, right? Um, whereas like the brand is like, okay, like, you know, like you said, it's, um, you don't buy a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you buy a motorcycle because you want to go fast and you want to feel the, you know, the wind. Yeah, uh, you know, and that's the same way. I always think like, you know, if I picture, if I envision a Porsche, it's with the top down. Don't ask me why, right? <laughs> like that's that's just the way I picture a Porsche, right? So, um, you know, kudos to you and what you guys are doing, man. Um, I'm super impressed with you. Um, I love what you're doing. You know, we kind of bump paths or beep horns like at you know very early in the morning, and I think yeah. that <laughs> you know, the rest of the time is spent the way it should be, which is with our families. Yeah. Uh, it's really important, you know, and it's uh it's just fun watching the kids grow up so quickly. I know, uh, too quickly. I wish they would slow down a little bit, but you know, at the same time, you know, it's like uh I know the boys are playing a lot of baseball. You know, I see them yeah. like, swinging the the hockey sticks and everything else. So. Yeah, yeah, no, Pat, the days are long, but the years are short. That's that's uh. Oh my god! Like, I wish. I, wish I, I mean, I can't. How's it October? How's a Q4? You know, it's oh my god, you know, you know, my son reminded me the other day, I forgot how many days it is till Christmas, but it's not long. And I was like, oof, I gotta, you know, start acting on that, you know. And so, right, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's incredible, uh, you know, what's what transpired in the last couple of years just living there and how much my life has changed and your life completely too, you know. And so, I mean, it's just all good things, it's but it's about having that positive mindset, you know you can make the day the way you want it to go, you know? And so, I mean, the, the, the controllable is you and your mindset. I, it's just the way I believe, you know, and, and if you, and you can do anything, you just got to put your mind to it, you know? And, um, you know, I know my limitations and what I can't do, you know, I'm not a great yeah. handy man. I'd rather hire someone else to do it. <laughs> I'm, good at, I'm good at making the money to pay for them, you know, and, and, and <laughs> providing for him, you know? So, uh, I don't, you know, it's it's it is uh it's thank you though for those kind words uh, it's really cool though yeah you're, you're a man after my own heart amber and i i i you know i i could barely wheel like you know it's funny because i'm in real estate and like i'll, I'll yeah. get ceos for people and i'm like i don't even change my own smoke detectors right like it's <laughs> I'm, my wife hired, my wife's the handy person around the house and if she can't figure it out then right. she gets she gets someone to do it i mean listen to me my time is is just so crucial. I was just saying it today. I just literally said today. I wish there was twenty six hours in a day. I just don't have enough time. You know, you work, you work ten to twelve hours. And like you know, I work here um, from from call it eight to seven p.m. and then and then you get home and you, and you have time to be with your family. And then there's still work going on. You know, I'm the crazy guy that answers all the internet leads at night, you know, just making sure we're getting back to customers. Anyone that inquires from, from 7 PM to midnight, I answer everything myself just because right. I want to make sure the customers are taken care of and, and that we're answering questions for people that are inquiring. And then, you know, uh, before you know it, the night's over and then it's time to do it again. And that's why I hire like landscapers. I hire people to do things is because my time when it is free is very, very valuable. Just like my time when I'm working is valuable. So I want to spend that with my family. I want to spend it with my wife. I need to chisel away at golf, you know, and I need to get, you know, I need to find time for that because that's part of my own time. But, you know, me and my wife are going out tomorrow to go golfing and that's going to be some nice time we're going to spend together, you know. And so I'm taking the day off tomorrow a little selfishly because I just need it, you know. And so I've been grinding really hard. And so sometimes you just got to take those those days off for yourself and reset. It's it's super important in my opinion. You have to reboot, man. Like I, yeah. I, I am guilty of it myself. I'll go hard three, four days in a row. Yeah. And I'm like wipe. Like today's going to be one of those days. Like I started early. Um, I'm going to a dinner as soon as I, you know, we wind up ending this. 
And, you know, it's just, you know, it's, uh, and again, I wouldn't want it any other way, right? Like yeah. I joined, I joined your church group and it starts at 630 on a Saturday. It's <laughs> the best morning of the week, right? I'm like, yeah. this is crazy, but I'm like, you know, could I sleep in for another hour? Yeah. You know, but what I get out of it is so much more than what, you know, an extra hour of sleep. Yeah. yeah. That that, that's what's helped me was, you know, today I, I set my alarm for 6 30 and I had a bad night sleeping. And so I ended up not going to the gym or, or going for my walk this morning. But it was just one of those things when you go for the walk and you wake up and you're like, ah, oh, you know, it's it's seven. I, I I can still sleep another half hour, another hour. But what you get out of working out like when i'm when i'm halfway through my walk or when you accomplish it and you finish it you feel so much better you know and some days there's days i go out like six in the morning because i can't sleep and i get up at 5 30 or something and it's six in the morning and i'm done by seven and i'm like oh i have the whole day like it feels amazing to and i'm like you know what i can i can wake up one hour earlier i can do it one more hour earlier and 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 so for you to to go i could sleep past 6 30 but what i get out of it the fulfillment i get out of it by going at 6 30 to this group that that's worth waking up. It's worth being a little bit tired because tired is just a, a small phase. It's just, it's something you, you get out of it in 15, 20 minutes. So my friend used to yell at me because he used to want to go golfing and we, we'd be out drinking at a bar and be like two in the morning. I'm like, there's no way we're going to say, he's like, what, you're going to wake up a little bit tired? He goes, you'll be, you were fine by the first hole, you know? And, and it's right. Like this is his mentality he's always had. And, and, he, and he's right. It's, it's, uh, it's 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 a thing that just goes away you just got to get past that mental hurdle like i said it's it's all most of what our life is a lot of the things we deal with and then the challenges we put upon ourselves are mental you know and it's just break right. that just just do it you know and that's how when i woke up that that day and i was 226 pounds i was like what's the excuses tomorrow you're gonna do it tomorrow or next week you're gonna start you just gotta start just stop. It's stop procrastinating. You know, if you can do it today, why well, push it up to tomorrow? Just do it. And that's what my mentality was. And I just started. And then you cheat a little bit and you reset a little bit. But now I'm in such a good groove and I'm down 35 pounds. You know, it's just it's just a, a mindset. Now it's a lifestyle for me, right? You know, it changed my relationship with food. Uh, I realized that just walking 30 minutes a day is much more accomplishment than than working out two hours every every other day. You know, and just you know, it's just that little progress every single day will make you so much more whole as a person. I just feel that way. Right. And uh, no, it, it's so true, man. Like I told you, I've, I battle with weight a lot, but I, I've, I, I know that you can't uh, out exercise your mouth. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah, you know, it is what it is. I just like to eat too much. And uh, as I say that, I'm going to Patricia <laughs> home now and I can guarantee you I'm going to have the, um, uh, the, what is it? The chicken parm. And um, where chicken. are you going? Patricia's of Homedale. Ah, yeah, the, the chicken parm is fantastic. It's incredible there. Um, yeah, I mean, the good thing is I'm in a good spot that now I, I can eat those kind of things. You know, and, and we went out to lunch today. I went out with Portia today for lunch, and and I had my meal here that I eat every single day. And uh, I was like, yeah, I can go out for lunch. But then I was like, should I get the cheeseburger? Should I get this? And I ended up getting a salad, you know? And I was like, ah, I'll just make the right decision because then I'll be mad at myself later. But on the weekends, well, we want fried chicken. We want pizza, you know? It, it's, yes. you gotta also have those spoils in life too. You're working super hard, uh, you know, and you gotta be able to do it. But it's like, a, it's finding that balance, you know? And knowing if I have one bad meal, I should probably put two more good ones in me before I eat another bad one, so. Uh, I'm just trying to, to keep that mindset, it's, it, but now I'm in such a good groove. It's easy to, to maintain it. You know, I feel really good about where I am and you just got to start. I mean, Peter, you're a big dude. You know what I mean? So, you know, the giant, the, the weight is healthy. Don't worry about it. You know? So, uh, but yeah, I mean, but just you, you're up really early, you know? And so can you get up another half hour earlier and just go for a walk or, before you end your night, just go for a brisk walk. Because if you just do that five, six days a week, I when I when I I was eating right and incorporated that, and I think I went down from two twenty six to uh, around two oh seven or something like that, and and I felt like I plateaued because I was just eating. But then we had a walking challenge here. Penske has a walking challenge, and it was uh, get to a million steps. And your team gets like $300 of HelloFresh if you do it in a month. And I'm like, ah, oh, a million steps. That's easy for our team, right? So my team was two technicians, a service writer, and then they, they asked me to join them. I'm like, sure. 
every day you would see the stats on this app. And every day I was last because I'm in my office, I'm working. So I was like, you know what? Walking one day, th they would show me. I'm like, oh, I'm at 10,000 steps. I'm like, I'm at 5,000. I walked I walked three miles today, uh, this morning before I even came to work. So then I felt like I was running them down. I was like, okay, I'm running you down. So uh, my wife could attest this. I would go home. So I'd walk in the morning. I'd work 10 hours. And then go home and walk another hour just to try and catch up on some steps. Because I felt I was running the team down. And we ended up, I think, in ninth place out of like 440 teams that joined it. Which was awesome. that. It was okay. great. And it just, but it, I did that for that month and I kept the same eating behavior. And I lost eight pounds in that one month, just that one month from walking. And I was like, wow, that's not hard to walk and listen to music or listen to squawk talk in the morning. Yeah, that's, not, that's not hard. So I just, kept it going and then my text and the guys that were in the group with me were like eh, wow you've been losing a lot of weight like you know you keep it i'm like yeah i just haven't stopped walking i just kept it going because why not such an easy lifestyle change and an easy thing to do and so you know i don't like working i don't want to crush my body before i go to do something you know and, and so the walking thing was so easy but now i've adapted some light weights and doing some more stuff going to the gym and so but I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't just take that first step, you know? And so it's just, it's just getting there and just doing it. And then realizing this isn't that hard. It was all mental. And once I got past that, now it's a lifestyle, you know, and it's just, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it for myself and, and do it for my family and be healthier. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, there was a point where I, I remember I got my first, like the first Apple watch and it was like the one that tracks steps and I yeah. wouldn't go to bed until I had 10,000 steps. And, Amber used to think I was crazy because we lived in this 1,400 square foot uh, condo in Asbury Park. Mm. I'd literally be walking from the bathroom <laughs> on one end to like yeah. the, the hallway. <laughs> People are like, and I'm like, I just got to do like 20 more loops <laughs> tonight. So, uh, you know, we get we get a little crazy sometimes, <laughs> but it's all for the, you know, it's because we have to do it. Otherwise, yeah. uh, if I deviate in any way, I'm done. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, you know, but that's a, that means you have a strong mindset. You know what I mean? But it's good. Totally. totally. So, uh, Pat, listen, um, I've held you on here long enough. I appreciate your time. Um, yeah. Like I said, there's some houses that I sometimes have to sell, but, you know, I wish I could conclude kind of one of your higher end cars. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, if you ever have a nice high end house that you want a car at, you just let me know. You come and pick it up, drop off your car, uh, or, you know, bring a, all right, just bring it home and I'll give you a car. I would love it. And then and then take it for a spin, drive like a Porsche, and you'll love it too. Yeah, absolutely. Pat, appreciate you, buddy. All right. All right. Thank you so much. And anytime you want to do this again, Peter, I would love to do it. It was awesome. Thank you, bud. Thanks, man. Later. All right. Talk to you later.